Welcome to another QuickBooks online tutorial. My name is Samuel Baumeister. I'm the owner at Tall Books. Today I'm going to take you through entering a bill or expenses into QuickBooks online. So this is one of the most common requests I get in training sessions. Everyone has expenses. We all deal with them. How do I enter them into my software? How do I record my receipts in a digital fashion so I don't have to keep them? So there's a few ways you can go about doing this. I'm going to show you today how to do that through the software. Keep in mind, if you download the free QuickBooks Online app, you can also take a photo and enter an expense that way as well. So let's start off with a bill. You've received a supplier invoice and you need to enter in that bill as it is payable at a later date. What you can do is use the quick create button at the top right, the plus, and you can go to bill. The other option is clicking on expenses and then you'll get an option to create a new transaction. So that could be an expense or a bill up here. So we're going to use bill. And the bill that I'm going to enter is an expense for accommodation that I had at, let's say, the Hilton for a, a travel, like a training conference or something like that. So the first thing we do, like with any area of the software, start from top and work your way to the bottom left to right. So top to bottom left to right is what you have to remember. So I'm going to put in the Hilton. And because I haven't entered this supplier before, I will have the option here to enter in a new supplier. So you can choose their currency. If you use multi-currency, you can add details. So to show you that, it will then let me add in full details. So if you have regular supplies, you might want to put in their ABN, um, which is the business ID number here. You can put in their default terms. Um, contact details, address, a lot of useful things, including attachments. So maybe you have specific um, account terms or T's and C's that you need to put in there for that supplier. So once that's done, I can click save and my new supplier is created. I'm going to say that we were given seven days to pay this one. So I can set up terms of my own or use one that exists. We're going to set up one called Net7, which is due in seven days. Right, so whatever bill date I choose, the due date will appear as seven days later. I'm going to choose the 10th of the second. Great. In the bill number, as we move to the right, this is where you'd enter in the supplier invoice number. So I'm going to make one up here, Hilton123. And then we move along to the account section. So QuickBooks splits this between a service and an item-based invoice. So the account details is directly coding to expense account, for example. So I could code this directly to travel expenses. Item detail would be me purchasing specific items or services that have been set up in the system already. So if I was a manufacturer or a retailer, I might be buying items from a supplier. This is where I would enter those in. You can select it from the list of existing items, or you can click add new and create a new item. Today, I'm going to deal with just the typical example, which would be an account. So we stay at the Hilton, let's say for a training conference. So I've put it under travel expenses, say training conference um, for managers in Feb 2018. So then we put in the price. You've got the option here to have the amount as inclusive or exclusive. So make sure you've selected the correct one first, if you are dealing with GST and then enter the amount in. So for this one, it's going to be 37160, including GST, so GST on non-capital. And that's all I'm going to use for the account details. So what you can see here is I've got a bill from the Hilton on this date with these terms. This is the bill number. The total balance due is displayed up the top. 
and also summarize down the bottom with a breakdown of how much GST is included. Once that's now coded, I can click save and close or just save and that bill will be added to the system. You'll now notice when we're in the expenses area, I have an open bill for Hilton. So if I choose my filter and I choose only to show open bills, so those that haven't been paid, I'll see my Hilton bill appear here. It comes up with my reference number as well, which is quite handy, and the account I have coded that to. So if I'd made a mistake and coded this to the wrong account, I can simply drop this down at this point and change that. Great, so what about when we pay the bill? Typically speaking, you would have already set up a bank feed, which you can see how to do in a previous video of mine. And that would mean your bank data is coming through automatically. When the payment lands in the bank feed, we now need to allocate that as a payment for this bill. So let's use this as an example. The 10th of the second Hilton bill is going to be paid. So I'm gonna go back to the banking screen and you'll see here, I knew there was a payment in the, in the sample file for that amount marked as hotel on the bank detail. And it has found a matching bill for that amount and has asked me, do I want to match that? I'll say yes, so I'll match this to the bill which now marks that withdrawal as a payment against the bill and closes it for me. So to show you that again, in expenses now, it's gone from open. And what I'll do instead is we will look at a custom date range. So let's say, let's look at bills 2018 in Feb. You'll notice now there's a payment applied to the Hilton bill. Whoop. There you go. Oh, open, so all statuses. There we go. So the Hilton bill is now closed. If I click into this, you'll see a payment up the top right. So it says paid. One payment made on the 10th of the second. If I click into that payment, it shows me some more detail. So I can then see at the top left, it was matched to the following online banking match. And that's how you enter a bill and match a payment. If you just wanted to enter an expense, there's two ways you can do that. The first way is directly from the bank feed. So when you click add, you can code it directly as an expense, as you can see here, assuming this is a withdrawal. I can then code that to a specific account. So this restaurant, I might code the meals and entertainment, GST free as it's not business, and leave a, a message, restaurant, family dinner maybe. So once that's done, if I click add, now on the fourth of the second, there will be an expense in the system created for me. So let's go all trend, we'll go expenses, and we want the last 365 days. So if we look here, we can see our expense that's been added now. It is the fourth of the second, oops, sorry, fourth of the second restaurant coded to meals and entertainment for 2906. So that's the easiest way to create an expense. I've used the bank transaction and just created an expense on the spot coding it to the expense account. The other way is entering the expense first to later match to your bank transaction. So let's find one here we can use as an example. So there's a parking expense on the 6th of the 2nd. So I'm just going to write this down, 6th of the 2nd, parking, $41. Okay, so once I have that information, I can go to expenses again and I'm going to add a new expense. Remembering that you can also use that plus button on the main screen. So for the pay, I'm gonna say it was Paystay, one of the common parking companies. Save the new supplier. I choose which account the expense was paid from. Notice as we enter an expense, this is a cash on delivery style receipt. Not like a bill where we apply a payment later, we're saying this has already been paid for. So I'm gonna say, yes, it was paid from the main bank account. 
on the 6th of the 2nd, because that's the date that we wrote down. I'll say it was paid by, doesn't really matter if you choose one of these or not, it's for your own reference, but let's just say direct debit, reference number we don't really need for a simple receipt. And then I'm going to code it to the parking expense account. Now there isn't one, so I'm going to create a new account under expenses called parking. Save that. And I'll just say parking fees whilst away. So the total inclusive of tax was $41 GST on non capital. I've now entered my expense, top to bottom, left to right. I'm happy with the total, happy with the date and the account it came out of. I can save and close. Now that expense has been entered for me here on the 6th of the 2nd, I now want to match that to the bank transaction. And there it is. Because I've matched the date and the amount, it's picked up the expense in the bank feed and said, this looks like a match. Would you like to match it? And I'll say yes. Once that's done, your transaction is now entered and matched directly to the bank feed. So that's how you enter an expense. So remember with bills and expenses, they live under the expenses tab on the left hand side. And you can add them also using the plus up the top right with an expense or a bill. Use an expense for cash on delivery or a simple um, receipt like petrol, postage, etc. And enter a bill when the supplier has given you um, an invoice to pay later. One last thing I will mention is attachments. On any invoice, um, bill, receipt, basically any transaction in QuickBooks, you can add a document to the bottom left hand corner to store it digitally. So if you've taken a photo or you've got a copy on your computer, when you're in the transaction, you can attach this on the bottom left hand corner. You'll see the attachments area. This is in most window QuickBooks. Just simply click on that or drag and drop and that will allow you to add an attachment and then you can save and close. So there you have it. That's how you enter bills and expenses in QuickBooks Online.